Good evening and welcome to Troutwood Madison High School for tonight's regional final matchup between the Baden Rams and the Salina Bulldogs. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Darren Gilbert and Gil. We continue to move through the bracket. We are losing teams every single week. These teams one step away from the final four and we have one heck of a matchup tonight. Oh, we do. And you know, Salina went through a tough spell, lost the opening game, went on a nice roll, got to Wapak, got decimated with some key injuries and look, they bounced back. They've locked, knocked off the two seed and the three. Now they get an opportunity to win the regional and play for the final four. As the opening kick goes through the back of the end zone, you'll see the Salina Bulldogs will come out with the first possession tonight. Should be interesting to see what kind of uh, start that we see Salina get off to tonight. You mentioned they are very battle tested. They went through that grinder that is the Western Buckeye League. They were co-conference champs, but they are in a stage of the playoffs that they haven't seen in quite a while. You have a lot of kids right now that that trying to manage those emotions. And on this first drive that we're going to see, it's going to be interesting to see how they're kind of handling that, how the coaches got them ready to see if they settled in or if we see those jitters here early on. Well, one thing I can promise you, partner, they've the head coaches already communicated with Wapak to get the ins and outs of what they're going to do and what they're going to expect. But they're, you know, everybody's dinged up, you know, this late in the season. But Salina, fortunately, has everybody back that they lost in that Wapak game. And it was like one domino fell and then two and three fell. And, and Wapak, you know, walked away with that win that night. But credit to Salina and the coaching staff and the players, they regrouped. So actually, I had that one wrong. The greens threw me off. Baden actually chose to re uh, receive that opening kick as they had won the co coin toss. They did not defer. So they are on the field for offense first, getting a look at that vaunted Baden offense. However, they are coming off of a game where Walpock did a great job of shutting them down, really limited to that explosive play. They have a tremendous wide receiver out there that we should be calling his name plenty tonight. And we'll get a first look here at that offense and on the other side, the Salina defense. Yeah, there's so much speed on both sides of the ball for both ball clubs. Like you said, it's going to be interesting. Oh, nice play by Salina right there, especially by appeared to be number five, Carver Harris. Did a good job shedding that block and making the tackle right there. Xander Arnold did a nice job picking up the first down for Baden. That is at the 31 yard line. So first and 10. Baden with their first possession of tonight. Going to be a handoff carried off the right side, looking for a gap. Not much there. So line did a nice job of closing up that hole. Appeared to be Dalton Chilcote on the stop. Young man's had a solid season for them. They're just so physical, especially down in the front and at the linebacker core. They, they mirror Wapak quite a bit. Uh, Nate, I've had an opportunity to have both ball teams multiple times, and they just, both teams are so physical. This one's going to get carried right up the middle into the heart of that defense. Going to be stopped after about a pickup of two or three it's going to bring up third and long for the Rams and that's the first Aiden time that we see Aiden Brown's name get called a tremendous receiver for the Rams and almost 700 yards receiving this season leads that team in that category Lehman and Elson on the stop for the Bulldogs and this is what you want you want to put them in third and long situations for the Bulldogs to play in their play to their advantage excuse me Ritzy waits for the snap going to roll to his right Looks to air it out, comes back around, goes the other side of the field, has the receiver open on the far sideline. Catch in a first down for the Rams as he was able to get it to Austin Buckle. Warren's on the stop, run him not out at the boundary, but not until a first down. What they did is cleared the one side out. Nice quarterback right there, play right there, looking to the strong side and then came back to the weak side in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Ritz is going to hand this one up the middle, lots of room. Bouncing off some tacklers. Zach Yordy with some tough yards. Able to pick up another first down for the Rams. Braylon gave us on the stop along with Lutz. But like you said, not tell a big, big run by that young man. So it's going to bring up first and 10 in Salina territory. 9.37 left to go here in the opening quarter. 
See Salina, or excuse me, it's going to be the Rams coming out in the shotgun. Ritzy waits the snap. And he's going to pitch it. Nice run. Lots of space out there. Another nice pickup on first down for Carson Cheek. Here to be number 11, John Lutz on the stop. Tucker Ackley also coming in, assisting on the tackle, but not till gain of six. So you got to be second down and five for the Rams. Ritzy takes the snap, going to hand this one off. The running game has worked so far, and it's going to continue as they keep churning up yards right up the middle as Lem Grayson gets the carry and picks up the first down for the Rams. Yeah, the ball bounced on the turf, but the official was right there to down the, the football setting. His knee was already down on the turf. Nelson on the stop for Salino. Right now, the Rams just able to move right through that Bulldog defense with ease. Salina's going to have to try to bow their necks here, try to see if they can't get a stop and get the Rams off schedule with their play calling. Ritzy takes the snap, going to hand it off up the middle. Another big hole is there, clearing out lots of space as Zach Yordy up right around the first down marker. We'll see where they mark it. And it is going to be another first down for the Rams. Corbin Lehman on the stop. Yeah, that's too many yards if you're Salina giving up right now. Well, right now, they're not doing anything fancy. They're just handing off, oh. running it right up the middle. Yes. And each time, there is lots and lots of space. This time, they're going to try the left side. Looked like there was going to be a lane there for a minute for Yordy. But Salina able to like chop him down after about, about a pickup of four yards. Layman tripped him up. Not till that's gain of four. Line. Second and six. Yeah, right Eight. now. Hamilton Baden, excuse me, is controlling the line of scrimmage right now. Salinas is going to have to, to bear down. Clock continues to run here in the opening quarter as Baden is driving down the field as they are on the 15-yard line. And we are going to have a timeout. And this is going to be Hamilton. They're going to want to take the timeout. We'll take it out and take it as well. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, or Homestyle, happens here. Madden wanted to take the early time out here on second and six as they are looking to try to go in for a score. And right now, Gil, Salina has not had much of an answer for this Madden offense. Well, they had him in one series of third and eight. And... Uh they got a first down. They've been just chunking yards away. There's a little pass out into the flats. This one out to Brown as Aiden Brown is able to get that one out near a first down. And it is. So it's going to be first and goal for the Rams. Ball spotted at the five. Worst on the stop. Not until he got to the five. First and goal for the Rams. First and goal from the five-yard line for the Rams. Ritzy takes the snap, going to hand it off to Yordy. Yordy works off the right side. Got, got some flags on the field as Yordy was able to get into the end zone. So we'll wait to see. My goodness, did you see him throw his shoulder in that Salina defender and just bowled him over all the way to the end zone? And everybody's starting to walk back, so it looks like it's going to be a penalty on Batten. So a fortunate call that time for Salinas. That is going to prevent the Rams from putting up points on the scoreboard, at least for now. Illegal block below the waist. Offense number 65. So illegal block below the waist by the Rams. And that's going to push them back 15 as they are now on the 20-yard line. Still going to be first and goal, though. Yeah, and right now, you don't need even be pushed back that far. It's not probably much of a deterrent for the Rams, at least, as they've shown they've been able to pick up chunk yards here on this first drive. The big man, Gavin Schleister, 6'3", 320 at that left tackle position. Ritzy waits for the snap. Going to hand this one off. Here's Jordy again, works off that right side. He gets all and almost all of that penalty yardage back as he's going to be dropped about the six-yard line. They're going to officially mark it down at the seven-yard line. Under seven left to go here in the opening quarter. 
And his bad faces a second and goal. Rams. Braylon Gabus and Caleb Gabus on the stop. Jordy in the backfield is going to take this one as well. He's going to work off the right side one more time. Gets into a pile of defenders. And he's going to be driven backwards. Going to bring up a third and goal. Braylon Gabus with the big stop right there. I think Merlin initially had the initial set and made the first contact and stood him up and everybody else in the white uniforms, the Bulldogs come in and mopped up the play. So third and goal from the four yard line for the Rams. Salina looking for a big stop. He already with the handoff one more time. This time he goes to the left side, almost completely untouched for a Burke Petroleum touchdown. Boy, that young man, when he gets up ahead of steam, he's a tough one to bring down. Yordy gets Madden on the scoreboard first. Burke Petroleum is now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available. Contact them at 800-776-3097. Yeah, Mr. Yordy coming in, averaging 5.6 yards a carry, just cracked across his 12th touchdown for the season for the Rams. Kick is up, and it is no good. Oh, he pushed it. So bad, not able to convert the extra point. Coaching staff not happy with his, everything that went well on that opening drive, not being able to put that point on the board. They hope that doesn't come back to haunt them. Madden Rams there on top, a 6-0. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's instant replay sponsor, Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alt. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. As Salina watched the defense not able to stop Batten on their opening drive. So they're going to have that opportunity to try to return that favor, see if they can't pull even. I think we figured out why why, why the Rams wanted the ball, huh? Yeah, they wanted to set that tone, and Oof, that they did. They did. They, they chunked off almost half the clock in the first quarter on that drive. This kick is up. It's going to be short. So Lionel will be able to return it. Going to work along that far sideline. Looked like he had his space spun, kept his feet. Got to about the 30-yard line, maybe the 29. See where they mark it officially. But that is where Salina will come out for their first possession of tonight's game. Salina offense, they've had their ups and downs this season, but mostly ups. And through this tournament run, they have proven that they have been up to the task time and time again. And they are hoping that they'll be able to go nose for nose and shot for shot here with the Baden Rams. Well, they beat the host school here, you know, a couple weeks ago, Trotwood Madison. And last week got tip city tip a canoe. Handoff works off the right, left side. Excuse me. Nice job weaving his way through traffic. Sure was. That's As Lutz, John wasn't Lutz. it? Yep, Lutz did a nice job finding some space, getting that out to make it second and short for the Bulldogs. I think it was Ostendorf with the tackle, but not till he got about seven. Second and three, Bulldogs. Nice first play there by the Bulldogs. Establishing the running game, getting to plus seven. Makes that second down a little easier to call if you're a coach. So does. Bobby Morris takes a snap, going to hand this one off one more time. As Lutz is able to work his way through, he's going to pick up a first down for Salina. So a nice start to this drive, two plays, pick up nice yardage, get a fresh set of downs. Ostendorf again on the stop for the Rams. Ball at about the 38 yard line. So first and 10, ball is at 38 yard line for Salina. Morris waits for everybody to get set, has Lutz in the backfield with him. Lutz now going to switch sides. Now one more time. And goes in motion, Morris going to keep it himself, works up the middle, has a hole, keeps spinning, gets himself out of trouble before he's taken down, but after a nice gain on first down, they, excuse me, that wasn't Morris. It was actually uh, at the 45 yard line, second and about three for the division. It was actually it was, it was Braylon Gabe. Excuse me, Braylon Gabe was okay. back there in the shotgun. 
He took that snap, worked his way through, picked up nice yardage after a seven yard gain on first down. Salina has second and third, or second and three, excuse me. One more time, call his own number. Nice job, another pickup of about four that time as Gabes was able to get at that first down marker. We'll see. I thought he had gotten it, but Boy, and, it's they're, close. and they're going to go ahead and okay. call it, signal it for first down. So another fresh set of downs for the Bulldogs. I'll tell you what a great cut back to try to pop it to the outside. If it wasn't for Aiden Brown getting him around the ankles, it was going to be a foot race, partner. Now Morris back into the game under center. Going to take the snap, turns around, hands it off. Lutz dives right up the middle, continues to move those legs as that old line of Salina tries to get a push. The coaching staff knew that winning that up front battle was going to be huge tonight for the Bulldogs as that is sure. going to be able to throw a lot of size and strength at them. They knew that they were going to have to come up big, and it's plays like that shows you that tonight they look like they're going to be up for the task. And that was a hot ticket last week, that Wapaw, you know, game, as far as breaking it down for film and everything and film study. They're seeing something and exploiting something that they picked up on the tape. So four wide receivers on the near sideline. One out wide. And he gave one more time. Oh nice boy. space. Here he goes. He oh, gets the defender turned race. around. Going to work towards that far sideline. One man to beat. Cuts back in. Stays on his feet. And into the end zone for a touchdown. Salida with a huge answer as they have knotted this one at six. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. Boy, that was close in the end zone of that tackle. You know, he had broke through the end zone in the plane and got about four yards deep. Yeah, they thought they had him at about the, what, seven yard line and his speed and his athleticism, he found his way to the end zone. Yeah, Braylon did a great job of staying on his feet, not letting them force him out to the outside, changing directions. And he was able to get in for the tying score. So now Salina with a chance to go on top with the extra point. Kick is up. And it is Boy, good. That's a big make there early in this contest. So Salina shows Baden that they're capable of big play potential as well. And after each team has had a possession, Salina's on top, seven to six. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Today's premier sponsor for the Salina Bulldogs is Wabash Mutual, Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Tonight's touchdowns are brought to you by Berg Petroleum as Salina was able to answer a Berg Petroleum touchdown of Baden's with one of their own. And thanks to the mixed, missed extra point by Baden, Salina was able to convert theirs. They go on top as this one goes into the end zone. Touchback. So now it's going to be up to the Salina defense. See if they were able to make any sort of adjustments. Because, Gil, I'll tell you what, it did not look like Baden was going to have any trouble moving up and down the field. They really didn't seem a whole lot of resistance. Even a 15-yard penalty didn't uh, do anything to deter what they were able to do on no, offense. No, they went to the running game, and then they went to the flat. You didn't see anything vertical. I'm sure it's in the repertoire, but they're, they're spreading everything out, and he's satisfied here throwing the flat if it's available. Alex Ritzy back in the shotgun. He's going to hand this one off. Nice job moving around traffic. Oh, a heck of a great play there. pursuit, though, that time. As they were able to uh, get to the running back quickly, drag him down. John Lutz. And, and it's going to end up being a loss. So the first negative play forced by this Salina Bulldog defense, and that is a great answer here on that first play. You know, and, and people don't give a lot of credit to Salina's ability in the secondary, but they're exceptionally quick. And they all play with a high motor. Five wide receivers for the Rams. Ritzy gets everybody set. Two minutes left to go here in the opening quarter. He's going to throw out to the flat and let his receiver just a little bit too far as that bounced off of his off of his hands. And that's going to be an incomplete pass to bring up third and long for the Rams. Yeah, they had the blocks. The wide receivers did a really good job matching up and containing their blocks there. They saw something that they liked. 
unfortunately, just they couldn't make the connection. Again, this is what, what Salina likes here. You got him in a third and long situation. You know, you don't want to get beat deep. You want to keep the ball in front of you, and you certainly don't want to let them get to that 30, 31 yard line. Fritz, he drops back, looks to air it out, goes, throws it across the middle. Uh, this one's going to be picked off. Braylon Gavis does a great job of staying behind that one, picking that one off. But there is some yellow on the field back around the line of scrimmage. So we'll have to see what the call is to see if this one is going to stand. Just look at the Salina. Hit, possibly. Well, the Salina players. Oh, it's an it's illegal on, it's formation. On, it's on the Rams. So the turnover will stand. Braylon Gavis does a great job of high pointing that one, pulling it down, maintaining possession. And Salina now is going to take over with great field position. I tell you, that, that was a nice thrown ball. It really was. It was a little overthrown, you know, but the receiver was there. And if he makes that catch, it is a first down. But a, a great play there by Mr. Gavis. So Gavis is going to stay under center now as he's back in the shotgun. Gavis sends a man in motion. Takes the snap, going to hand it off. Works off the right side. Nice hole as the line now is dictating a lot as Carter Allstatter was able to pick up another nice carry. And remember what I told you in pregame when doubled nickel pulls 55 Merlin. You better tighten your chin strap because he pulls and he pulls hard and aggressive. Uh, excuse me, that eight or that nine looked like an eight to me from up here. That was actually Parker Burke. So he was able to pick up that nice yardage on that carry. Good so the job one thing by the defender right there, you know, taking on that blocker and still making the contact to make the tackle. Four wide receivers for Salina. Man gets set in motion. This one's going to get handed off. And another carry by Berkey as he is going to be stopped for about no game. This is going to bring up a third and three for the Bulldogs. You know, one of the things that we've seen that Salina has done a nice job with here in the early going is on first down, they have been able to pick up nice chunk yardage. So even though they weren't able to get much there on that second down, they are still in a very manageable third down position. Anniger on the stop there for the Rams. Nice play there by the young man putting in a third and three situation for the Bulldogs. Gabe is going to keep it himself, works right up the middle. He's going to be dropped right around the 35-yard line, which is where he needed to go. We'll see if they're going to signal for a first down, and they are. First down, Bulldogs. Tell you what, the offensive line right now, Elson, Merlin, Yaney, Chilco. Eichler doing a great job moving the penetration of the Rams defensive line. Like you said, he didn't get much, but he got enough to move them sticks, and that's all that matters. You get another three downs. Davis with the hard count tries to get back to the jump. See a little bit of motion up there, but they end up getting back, and that is going to bring the first quarter to a close. After one, the Salina Bulldogs are on top, a 7-6 to six over the Baden Rams. We'll step aside to be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpark, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, or home style, happens here. Welcome back to Trotwood Madison High School for the regional final matchup between the Salina Bulldogs and the Baton Rams. St. Garlock alongside Darren Gilbert. My As goodness, you, you what a see. big run there on that jet sweep Absolutely. on Parker. It's Salina right now. They're the one imposing their will on offense as they were able to move the ball extremely effective on their first possession. And it is the exact same here on their second time with the ball. Kate Wurtz out there on the end got a great kick out block on his defensive back covering him, allowing Mr. Jones to get up ahead of steam and March it down there for another first down for the Bulldogs. So Braylon Davis waits in the shotgun. He's going to take the snap and hand this one off. Lots and lots of room. I believe that is Lutz. And it is as he was able to pick up another nice pickup on a first down. 
As we see Salina continue to do a tremendous job on first down there, averaging six to seven yards every first down and puts them in a short field for the second and third down opportunities. And that's what I'm sorry, partner. I was just going to say Little and uh, Yordy were on the stop right there, but you're, you got it right. I mean, they're getting chunks and chunks of yards. Second and four. Davis is going to keep this one himself. Cuts back in. Almost was able to squirt free, but then was taken down at the 10-yard line, but not before he picks up another Bulldog um, first down. Guess what? Now you want to know why he was player of the year in the conference. <laughs> yeah. First team all district. And, you know, I can't announce all the district players. I don't have them listed, but I'm telling you, the WBL was well represented between Wapak and Salina. Congratulations to those kids in Division Three. So now it's going to be first and goal from the 10-yard line for the Bulldogs. Davis waits in the shotgun with Lutz next to him in the backfield. Going to send his receiver in motion. Going to hand this one off to Lutz. Lutz going to work off that left side. Gets pushed back. Has to reverse field. And he is going to be dropped about a yard loss on the carry. Yeah, that was a heck of a play right there. Stringing things out by Brown and Ostendorf. Yeah, that's one of them where he's just got to swallow it and get as much as he can and protect it, not put it on the turf. It's going to be second and goal from the 11-yard line for the Bulldogs. Davis waits in the shotgun. Parker Berkey joins in the backfield. This time he's going to try to go to the right. Oh going to jump boy. past it. A great play design. Great execution. And now two times in a row touching the football or touching the ball. Back to back touchdown possessions. Two words. Holy smokes. What a great executed play. Great play call by the, the Bulldog coaching staff. Got the Rams on some pressure. Snuck him to the back of the end zone. Nice delivery, nice catch. Touchdown for the Bulldogs. Well, look, originally, like maybe it was going to be a blown play or a blown coverage potentially, and it looked like it was meant to be a misdirection, and I thought maybe that had gotten stopped by Baden. Turns out it had everybody fooled, and it left a receiver wide open in the end zone, and after the extra point, Salina extends their lead as they're on top, 14-6. to 9-27 left to go here in the first half. We'll step aside to be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's touchdowns are brought to you by Burke Petroleum. Burke Petroleum is now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available. Contact them at 800-776-3097. Salina with their second Burke Petroleum touchdown here of the first half. Has them on top 14-6 in this regional final. And we saw... Well, a little bit of an attempt here of an onside kick is a great air that time on that one. So you see the Baton Rams trying to lobby for a little bit of a late hit that time. But. Yeah, that was a surprise kick, wasn't it? I mean, there, we are into a stiff breeze, I think. You know, going, what, to our right to left. But, yeah, that uh, that player from Salina, I'm trying to see who it was. I think it was Carter Allstetter. He got up ahead of steam and almost got to the – the young man who caught the ball. So now the Rams coming off of the turnover on their last possession. We'll look to see if they can get things right. Ritzy waits for the snap. Going to hand this one off up the middle. Yordy looks for a little bit of space, but it's nothing doing. As that was a play that was finding a lot of success for Batten on their first possession as Salina was leaving big gaps, but it looks like they've adjusted. So we saw Batten not having a lot of success running the ball in their second possession prior to the interception. Yes. And at least here in the early going, it looks like the same here on this possession. Chilcote on the stop along with his teammate Merlin. He already slipped to tackle that time as Salina had an opportunity to stop that one short. He already did a nice job of getting out of trouble, picking up some more yardage. He's going to bring up third and short. Yeah, he churned in legs, didn't he, and got him going north and south. That's what all good backs do, and he found his way to a, what, third and one situation. 
Lehman on the stop for the Bulldogs. Alex Rixey going to take a snap, hand this one on up the middle one more time. Yordy with some tough yards bouncing off of Salina players. Gets across midfield, picks up a first down for the Rams. Yeah, Ackley had a shot at him, and, and he just didn't quite get his hands on him and let Yordy get through that first seam, and Gabus come up and made the stop. Braylon Gabus, but not until a first down, like you said, for the Rams. So Yordy's going to get a breather. So you see Grayson in the backfield with Ritzy. Ritzy's going to air this one out. Here's Aiden Brown looking for some space. Salina did a nice job of sending an extra defender out there. Able to take him down after That's a short game to bring up Brown. second and seven. Great open field tackle there by so Braylon Gavis. Second and seven at the 46 yard line for the Rams. I think we got equipment adjustment here. Five time for yeah. equipment. And an official timeout on the field. You know, when Walpole played Salina in week 10, that score was very deceiving. And I know a lot of people in the stands here tonight is probably thinking, well, you know, Walpole put a put a, a, a whooping on Salina. Salina had three players, while starters on both sides of the football in the first half and never came back in that contest. He's going to Grayson with the carry. Looks for a little bit of space, did a nice job of being patient, waiting for his blockers to create space. Sure took was. It, took advantage of it, picked up another first down. Gavin Schleister, Tyler Abner, Drew Vaki, Jed Nagal, Ian Price. Great job up front there by the Rams, opening a hole for those running backs. Grayson one more time with the carry off the left side. Lots of room, barely touched. Trying to outrace the defender, but finally dragged down, but not after a big gain as he's taken down at the 15-yard line. Caleb Gabe is on the touchdown saving tackle. Grayson coming in to tonight. 16 rushing touchdowns. 800 yards on the ground. There's one more time up the middle as Zach Yordy once again picking up good yardage, gets it inside the five-yard line, and the Rams will have first and goal from the four. Two-headed monster back there. I'm telling you, one at 5.6 yards of carry, and the other one at 5.1. Able to put Yordy in there, and he gets in between the tackles, gets some hard yards picked up. Grayson, nice speed back. This time it's going to be Yordy. He's going to be stomped. Don't, not sure if they're going to give him a yard or if they're going to say at the line of scrimmage. Merlin and Chilco. No gain on that play. Bring up second and goal. About a one yard gain. Ritzy takes a snap. Going to hand it off to Yordi one more time. Follows the blocker, changes direction, back up the middle and into the end zone for a Burke Petroleum touchdown. Nice run by that young man. A lot of patience. Trying to see who opened up the big block up front. It appeared to be number 51, Jed Nagao, opened up enough seam to get him through there and get him into the end zone. Zach Yordi with his second touchdown of the game. And it looks like... Madden is going to go for two here already. They missed that first kick. Don't want to risk missing a second. So they're going to look to see if they can't time this one up at 14 on this two-point conversion. The wide receiver is going to shift out. Now four wide on the left side, one-on-one -on, -one on the right. Ritzy rolls to those left, going to roll back, looking for space. Salina has a defender out. He slipped out of two tackles, made a third miss. Here's a fourth and a fifth, but finally taken down, and that one's going to be incomplete. Alex Ritzy did everything he oh, could he did, to keep that he? one alive, but bad not able to convert on the two-point conversion, and that is going to keep the score at 14 to 12. Good pressure by Chill Code right there by the Bulldogs. Salinas still on top, but Baden showing that they're able to go right back down the field as well. We got a shoot on, shootout on our hands here at Trotwood Madison. We're going to step aside and be back on WOSN.
Welcome back. Tonight's instant replay sponsor, Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alt. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Six on one left to go here in the first half. Batten kicking off to Salina. Salina is on top, 14 to 12. As this one's going to go out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Salina on their first two possessions, Gil, have had absolutely no problems moving the ball down the field. Both trips ended up in the end zone. Batten just has not been able to make any adjustments right now to what Salina's doing. Well, and you know what? There's not been a lot of balls thrown down the field, you know, and they're relying on the running game on both ball clubs, and eventually, you know, when time gets milked off the clock, they're going to have to start throwing the football. Now, Baton is throwing it. The Rams are throwing it, but everything's in the flat with the exception of the one pass down the seam. That turned into an interception. Braylon Davis in the backfield, waits for the snap, sends his receiver in motion, going to hand this one off. The Berkey works off the left side. My goodness, now they brought Chilcoat from the other side, and he just exploded the outside. They ran off his hip on that pull. Salina continues to have great production on first down as they get nine on that one to bring up second and one. Yeah, he was one step away from really getting into that secondary and going a long, long ways. Davis has got three receivers out to the right, one to his left. Takes the snap, going to hand this one off. Keeps it himself, pulls it back on the option. As he gets up the middle, picks up about five yards. It's going to be enough for another first down. Clock will continue to run here in the first half. And Salina will have the ball on their own 35-yard line. A down by Jared Leibelsberger. Jared Leibelsberger on the stop. Got number 90 on the roster sent to us, but he appears to be number 69. Berkey still in the backfield with Davis. Davis sends Jones in motion. Going to keep it himself. Tries to spin out of trouble. Nice open field tackle by the Rams to limit the damage that time by Davis. Really the first time I can remember a first down play going for anything less than five yards for Salina. Aiden Brown, like you said, that was a great open field tackle right there. Everything was going to the right side and Davis broke it off to this left and Mr. Brown made a great open field tackle. Second and eight from 37 for Salina. Davis has an empty backfield. Five wide. Four to the right. Got one here towards the near sideline. Davis going to drop back. Looks to throw. Has Jones. Jones able to adjust to that one. It was a little bit behind him, but a great job of gathering that one in. As Xander Jones is going to pick up the first down for Salina. Aiden Brown on the stop along with Drew Inninger. Not until, like you said, a first down for the Bulldogs. That's a heck of a catch, because I'll tell you, that ball was thrown before he turned around. And a little bit of a flutter on it as well, so he had to kind of adjust. Wasn't the easiest catch to make, but Xander Jones did a nice job making sure he brought that one in and pick up the first down. Three fifty-five left to go here in the half. Salina. Wanting to put another score on the board before they have to go to the locker room. And we're going to have a whistle as I believe Salina called a timeout prior to the snap. And they do. Timeout, That's their first of the half. We'll step aside as well and be back okay, on WOSN. Welcome back. Today's premier sponsor for the Salina Bulldogs is Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Salina with the first and 10 on their own 48 after Xander Jones' first down. Coming out of the timeout, looking to continue to having good success here on first down. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what adjustment he went to right here. Davis going to keep it himself, works back up the middle. Had a little bit of space for a second, but ended up closing quickly. But a flag comes out late. Not sure if we had a face mask. 
Or no, we're going to have a targeting, it looks oh like. Helmet boy. to helmet. We'll see who they call and this see, on. I don't know if it's a target call. Is that an automatic ejection? So we're going to see what the officials call here. I don't here, know what but the rule he, is in OHSAA. He immediately went up and showed the helmet to helmet hit. As this is going to be a big 15 yard penalty for the Bulldogs. Defense number 42. 15 yard batter. First down. So it must not be an ejection as 42 was the one that's penalized. I don't even see him coming out of the game. Yeah, that's, Ost uh, that's Ostendorf. The that's their leading tackler, leading sack guy. Coming in with 112 tackles on the year. But either way, that is a big play for Salina as they get a free 15 yards. And they're now on the Rams 34 yard line here with 335 left to go in the half. Davison Jones in motion. Going to keep it himself. Had a little bit of a spot there, but this time Baden doing a much better job of closing those holes quickly as Gavis was shut down after only a one-yard run. Ostendorf on the stop. You think the game's going to get a little physical? It looks like it. You can see a little bit of extra happening towards the end of that play. Once again, into the middle. The trenches are going to get physical. Yeah, they are trying to impose their will on each other right now with three minutes left to go. This would be a big drive. If Salina is able to get another touchdown oh. here, they get the ball coming out of halftime, and they could really put some daylight between them and the Rams. You bet. Looks like Morris just checked into the game. You haven't seen him for quite a while. And he's going to hand this one off to Lutz. Lutz oh, has a whole kick out well, block. Merlin. Nice job. Great play design as Lutz is able to get up in another flag towards the end of the play, but I think it might, this one might go on Salina. Saw a late hit way out of bounds, and that might be a big mental mistake for the Bull. Yeah, that could be. That, I apologize. That was Chilcoat on the kickout block. So it looks like since it's going to be a dead ball potentially, it'll be 15 yards from the spot of the foul. So it might still be first down for the Bulldogs, but they're getting pushed back. Well, I'll tell you what, that's a group that's not going to back down, you know, and yeah, that's that's one of those 55, 59, okay. 10 yards from the end of the run, first down. So it wasn't a late hit, it ended up being a block in the back. Still going to end up being a first down for the Bulldogs, but instead of being up around the 10 yard line, they're getting pushed back and they're going to be on the 23. And you know what a positive would come out of that? That's a lineman coming down the field, getting ahead of his ball carrier, trying to make a play. So it's not like it happened way back. It's unfortunate it did happen, but he was trying to make a play for the betterment of his team. Butts takes the handoff, works up the middle. Gave us back in the game for Salina. He's going to be stopped after about a two-yard run. Look at was Ostendorf in on this tackle about again. Game on the play. Clock game. continuing to run as we reach almost two minutes left to go. Salina driving, trying to get some points here before the end of the half. Well, and here's the key thing. Like you said, they get the ball coming out. They're going to try to milk as much time as they can off this clock and not try to give uh, the Rams the football back. Davis going to roll to his right, going to look to air it out. Has some pressure, has an open receiver. And another first down for Salina, as I believe that that is going to be Allstatter. All you betcha. Drug him out from the in the flat area, un, uncovered. Comes from the tight end position, finds himself, finds himself wide open, and does a nice job of turning up field to pick up the first down. It's going to bring first and 10 from the 11, so Salina can still pick up a first down without scoring. And there's only a minute 30 left to go. They do still have two timeouts. Well, and they have another luxury too, partner. They got a kid that can kick field goals. So if you can't that punch in the end yep. zone for six and the extra point, you can always try to kick three. Gabe is going to keep it himself. Goes off that right side. Has a great lead block. Oh. Fights through, and he's going to get into the end zone for the touchdown. No. 
He is going to be stopped short. He stepped out at the one-yard line. It is going to give him a fresh set of downs, but they are going to be first and goal from the first, or from, excuse me, from the one-yard line and a minute 10 left to go. I don't know if I've seen a team that does a better job pulling their guards on both sides. I mean, those boys are big, strong, and they can run. Well, that's what I was just going to say. It's not so much that they're even able to pull them, that those guys are able to do it quickly. They oh. have speed in the backfield. Those guards have got to get out fast to get in position, and they do just that. They do a nice job of making sure that they pick up those lead blocks. Davis going to keep it himself. Works right up the middle. Gets into the end zone for another Burke Petroleum touchdown. touchdown. Boy, is that big for the Bulldogs. Now the only thing that, you know, you're left to wonder, minute seven, there's still a lot of time, especially with two timeouts. We know that Batten has the ability to throw the ball and air it out. So Salina is still going to have some work to do on defense. But pending this extra point, and you're going to extend this lead out to eight, potentially nine. It could be a two-possession game here. Snap is good. Kick is down. Ooh, and I believe we we're going to have an offsides on the defense, I believe, as they were trying to time that up. So the Leafs, I believe Salina is going to be able to move a little bit closer. We'll see if that changes what the Bulldogs wants to do or not. Boy, if they do, this could make this. 10-point game if they can convert a two-point conversion. I think the Salina coaching staff's upset that the play was blown dead. They just wanted it to go through since it was a defensive <laughs> penalty. And they're going to decline it. But I'm not sure how you can decline it as I, I believe they blew it dead. Football, encroachment, defense number four, penalties declined, retry. So then we're not going to move the ball anywhere. Not going to get any closer. Going to keep it right where it is and try to re-kick. Yeah, a couple of them tried to get a head start and timed that snap up, that being the Rams, and got caught in the neutral zone. Kick is down, or snap is down, kick is up, and it is good. So Salina, they go on top. It's a two-possession game now as they are on top, 21 to 12, with a minute seven left to go here in the first half. We're going to step aside, and we'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's touchdowns are brought to you by Burke Petroleum. Burke Petroleum is now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available. Contact them at 800-776-3097. Minute seven left to go here in the first half at Troutwood Madison. Nate Garlock alongside Darren Gilbert. As Salina's offense has just been unstoppable here in the first half as they have marched right down the field on each of their three possessions, each one ending in the end zone. See another high kick as Salinas trying to run down to see if they can't disrupt it. And they immediately take down uh, the Ram returner. Limits that one to no gain. Listen to this, partner. Hayden Brown, five kickoff returns, 172 yards, 34.4. Average ben, one touchdown. Austin Buckle, five for 102, 20.4 yards. Well, we saw Salina kick it deep the first time. They were able to put it out of the end. But since we flipped the field and the wind now, they're, they're kicking into the wind, they have decided that they want to go with a different strategy. They want to make sure the ball does not end up in either one of those returners' hands. One of those coaches, assistant coaches, did their homework on stats, didn't they? Because they are not kicking that thing deep to either one. Number three, number one, or number 21, Carson Cheek. Gonna be a false start penalty on the Rams. So they're gonna back up five yards. Replay the first down. Right now, Badham going the wrong direction here. Is this is a big, a big possession here for Badham? Or excuse me, Badham. As coming out of the locker room, Salina will get the opening kick. So you know that Badham would love some opportunity here to pick up a big play, give themselves at least an opportunity to get some points. Yeah, this is where if you're Salina, keep the football in front of you. Do not let anybody get behind you. And he's throwing the football right now with a nice breeze behind him. They're yeah, going to throw it out towards the near sideline. Oh, that's a great play for Salina, keeping the football in bounds. 
So the clock will continue to run. The Rams do have two timeouts left. They're going to hurry. Get to the line of scrimmage. Ritzy takes the snap. Going to drop back. Going to look to air it out. Moves around in space. Looking for a receiver. Throws across his body. This one's going to go out of bounds and incomplete. Good pressure there by the big fella, Mr. Merlin and Chilcoat. Forcing the quarterback out of the pocket, not being able to get his feet set, having to throw the ball across his body. So now only 39 seconds left to go. It's going to be third and six for the Rams. And I'll tell you what, if you're Salina, are you thinking maybe a uh, one stop? Got a couple of timeouts. We know we got a good kicker. Maybe we can get some more points well, before and, this is over. You know, and I was a little surprised they didn't take that timeout. And that's going to be kind of a moot point at this point. And as, as the nice Rams are able, catch. yeah, they're able to pick up the first down. They're going to move the sticks. 32 seconds left to go here in the half. Real hitty play there, trying that's to see who that down. was. Appeared to be number three, Austin Buckle on the reception. Good job catching it, getting it out of bounds. Ritzy looks towards the sideline, gets the play call. Grayson in the backfield with Ritzy. Another oh false boy. start as the Rams just not on the same page for the snap. So they're going to back up five more yards. Step off, false start in the offense. Everybody but the center. <laughs> you know, sometimes you have a little bit of levity in that time. Instead of putting it on anybody, Please the official just let them know it was everybody. Ball. Everybody but that center move that time. He Which, uh, he actually he explained it <laughs> to everybody in the facility. So when you watch the replay, you're going to be able to see everybody move <laughs> except the center. A little bit of a low snap. Rich able to gather it in, but the pass is going to be high as – Aiden Brown was, or yeah, it was Aiden Brown Passes not able to reach up and put that one down. John Lutz on the coverage there, but like he said, the ball appeared to float a little bit. So second and 15 for the Rams. Four wide receivers. Rich is getting the play in from the sideline. We know they have big play potential. Oh, Ritzy has do. a big arm, does a nice job of extending plays with his legs. Opportunity to do that right here, but Salina gets to him and brings him down. Chill coat. Big, big play by the Bulldog defense as the Rams in hurry up mode here with 10 seconds left to go. And we'll see if they're going to try to get a snap off or if they're just going to let the clock run out. And the Rams are going to take the timeout with two seconds left to go. They are on their own 36-yard line. We'll see what they're able to draw up. We'll step aside to be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Only two seconds left to go here in the half as Baden let some precious time click off before they called that timeout. We'll see what they were able to draw up, what kind of tricks they have up their sleeves. I can't imagine that Ritz is going to be able to cover this. the entire field with his arm strength, so they're going to be looking for some laterals. A little hook and ladder action, maybe? Nope, they didn't. And that is going to bring the first half to a close. The Salina offense has been dominant. Three possessions, three touchdowns, and they go into the locker room on top of 21 to 12. We'll step aside, and we'll be back with the third quarter here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpark, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Tonight's instant replay sponsor, Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alt. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Welcome back to Trotwood Madison High School for tonight's regional final matchup between the Baton Rams and the Salina Bulldogs. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Darren Gilbert. And Gil, second half just about underway here, but I'll tell you what, that first half 
you know, I mean, if we're being honest about it and coming into this game, you're looking at a 13-0 Hamilton Madden team. You know, they had a tight one last week. They just got by Walpock, but other than that, it has been a rather dominant season for them. Salina in a position that they're not used to seeing, but you would not know it from watching this. This has been all Salina. Their offense has looked phenomenal here tonight. We can't say all green because both teams wear green, but I'm telling you, the first possession, Trywood Madison took – or uh, not Trywood Madison, I'm sorry, we're Trywood, uh, but the Rams of, of Hamilton Baden took the thing down and punch Salina in the mouth, and Salina had two choices. Either you roll over or you take it and give it back, and they decided to take it and give it back. And, I mean, they put a licking on the Rams in the second quarter, and I think where it's won right now is is on the interior and the offensive line for the Bulldogs. They've been opening up huge holes, and they decided to play defense, and they're shutting Hamilton Baton's offense down. So Salina gets this kickoff here to open the second half, and they get it all the way out near the 40-yard line. This is where they'll have their first possession in the third quarter. Every time the Bulldogs have touched the football, it's ended in the end zone. We've seen them pick up chunk yardage. They've been able to grind things out. They've done a nice job of staying on schedule all night long. Saw them go up by two scores there late in the first half. They have an opportunity here. If they can put together another drive and get some more points on the board, they could really open this up. Yeah, you can't script it any better right here with that kickoff right there and great field position to take the football. Here's Xander Jones, works on that right side. Looked like he might have had some space, decided to cut it back off, and it gets cut off after a short gain on first down. Yeah, I think you're going to see the Rammies play with a little extra hop in their step defensively. I'm just curious. I haven't seen their scores through the, throughout the season. I'm just curious on how many games they've been behind throughout the year. Are they a team that can play from behind? And have they been in a situation where they've been down nine or more well, within we do a ball game? We know at least one game, and that was last week oh, against Walpock. Yep. They found themselves down 10 nothing in that game before they were able to claw their way back in it. But Walpock had a lot of injuries that they faced, uh, and that really shut down their offense. As you see the Rams flying to the football as Lutz not able to get any space. He's taken down for a loss of two. Looks like we might have an injury as maybe Lutz might have been shaken up as they're working on somebody on the sideline after that carry. Yeah, somebody put a licking over there. I don't know if it was Ostendorf or who, but somebody for the Rams put a heck of a pop over there on that far side. Braylon Davis is facing a big third down here, third and nine. See if they're able to continue this drive or if Baden can get off the field defensively. Davis gonna drop back, looks to air it out. Gonna go long on that far sideline and just off, off of the outstretched fingertips. Whoa. Was it of it? Believe that that is gonna be on Xander Jones is who that pass was intended for. It was a great pass. Jones had a chance, but just missed on that pass. Threw it, threw it to a spot where one going to get intercepted. And like you said, he laid out for it and just went off his fingertips. Had a one-on-one -on -one situation right there. First time we've seen Salina try to go downfield with the ball through the air at least. Now zone, Jones excuse me, is going to have to go back as he will send this punt away. It's going to be the first punt for the Bulldogs. This one's going to be high. Jones gets his hands on it. Gets rid of it just barely. Yeah, very fortunate And it's going to take a bulldog bounce as that had disaster written all oh, over what it. What an athletic play by that Jones. Young man. He was able to get to it, looked around, realized he could still get a kickoff. Wasn't the greatest kick, but it did move it downfield. And the Rams will take over on their own 36-yard line. And they get an opportunity here to see if Alex, Richie, and the rest of this team, Richie, excuse me, are able to uh, go down and See if they can't put one in the end zone here. Yeah, that was a heck of, that was a heck of a play. I watched his demeanor walking off the field, and it was almost like we could feel a big sigh of relief from the young man. He did he did a great job picking it up, keeping his composure, and got as much as he could on that kick. Ritzy back in the shotgun, takes a snap. Gonna throw this one out wide. This one to Aiden Brown. He was kept relatively in check in that first half. You know they'd love to get him going here in this third quarter. And it's a nice way to get that going as he picks up about seven on that first down. Yeah, just, just going to be curious to see how much they turn the quarterback loose with his arm. 
The Rams playing with some tempo. Ritzy's going to hand this one off. Here's Yoder with a big hole up the middle. As we saw Yoder, or excuse me, Yordy. You got the wind blowing up, you're getting a little bit cold. <laughs> Trying to keep everything loose, but Yordy had some space up the middle. We did see that happen quite a bit to Salina, at least on that first drive Woo. of the game. And that time again, Yordy found his space, able to pick up another first down, and he has the carry here again. Yordy just bull rush rushes over a couple of defenders. Picks up another first down for the Bulldogs. Yeah, they're playing with uh, basically a different attitude right here in the third quarter. Just be first down for the Rams, not the Bulldogs. All is green on the field. Ooh. <laughs> Get the sides flipped. But the Rams, they're driving. Ritzy takes the snap, going to hand this one off. Here's Grayson. Grayson cuts it back up the middle. He's going to get taken down right around the 20-yard line. Went right behind the right guard, Mr. Nagao, Price, Baki, Abner, Schleister up front, opening up huge holes like they did early in the contest. Second and short for the Rams. Ritzy back in the shotgun with Grayson. Takes a snap, hands it off to Grayson. Grayson works off the right side. Looking for a block. Not a lot of space, but uses that speed to pick up a first down after a nice carry, five yards. Going to be first and 10 from the uh, Bulldogs 15-yard line as the Rams right now are moving right down the field. All stutter on the stop with the help from Caleb Gabus. See the Rams really wanting to move with tempo. They're speeding things up. Here's Yordy. Yordy cuts back up the middle. As Zach Yordy continues to have nice pickups on first down. He gets eight on that carry to bring up second and two. Yeah, that one he decided to go right behind his big left tackle. Six foot three, 320 pound senior Gavin Schleister. Ritzy takes a snap. Going to hand this off to Yordy one more time. Yordy bounces off a couple of would-be tacklers. And he's drugged down after a short game, but not before he picks up another first down. It's going to be first and goal from the Ram, for the Rams from the three-yard line. Yeah, it's not taking them long to move the ball and move the chains here, partner, on this possession. He hands it off to Yordi. Yordi off the left side, and he's going to be stopped just shy of the goal line. And they're going to mark him down at the one. To the one yard line. Second and goal. Ram. Didn't quite make out who that tackle was. Looked like Braylon Gabus right there saved the touchdown. Etsy takes the snap, hands it off to Yordy. Zach Yordy plows into the end zone for another Burke Petroleum Stay touchdown. Stay Impressive drive there by the Rams. 6.55 left to go here in the third. And the Rams are going to go for the extra point. They missed an extra point in the first quarter. They went for two on their touchdown in the second quarter and couldn't convert. So still down three, but going to go for the extra point to at least keep this inside three points. That kick is up, and it is good. So the Rams draw first blood here in the second half as they get one in the end zone. They trail 21-19. We'll step aside and be back on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's touchdown sponsor is Burke Petroleum. Burke Petroleum is now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available. Contact us at 800-776-3097. The following of Baden Rams, Burke Petroleum touchdown. Salina is going to come out for their second possession of the half. And, you know, Gil, that is not the same Salina offense we saw in the first half. Well, you, you want to believe... You know, the way the Rams are playing defense right now, they are really loading the box up. 
and he's going to force Salina to throw the ball into a pretty gusty wind. I think, you know, if Salina can survive this quarter with a little under seven to go and flip the field and have the wind in the fourth quarter, it's going to be to their advantage. But they've got to find some, some way to sustain a, sustain a drive and gain some yards here because they can ill afford another three and out. Jump pass wide open, Xander Jones. Jones gets taken down at the 40 yard line. What a heads up play by Braylon Gavis, but Gavis got taken down hard out of bounds. See if he's okay. He's a little slow to get up, kind of limpy. Not sure if he's going to come back in or they're going to put, and then they're going to bring Morris in here for this play. He's limpy and gimpy, but I guarantee one thing the kid's going to be back in the football game. What a hit, like you said, what a headsy play right there. Now Morris in the backfield for the Bulldogs. Takes the snap. Going to hand this one off to Berkey. Berkey met by a host of Rams before he can get anything going as Baden is getting a big push on that offensive line. Yeah, the adjustments have been made, huh, by the defensive coordinator, the offensive line coach, and offensive coordinator. You can see it, like you said, that, you know, the Rams right now on both sides of the football, they're playing with a an extra gear right now, okay, so to speak. Down, Salina. Yeah, right now, and if you're bad, and you, you, you gotta be more than comfortable with loading that box up until Salina can show you that they can beat you downfield. Davis lays this one out. Oh, what, what a catch. catch! An unbelievable effort that time by That's number 24, team. Nick Newell. Nick Newell went up one-handed, had to tip that to himself, came down with it. What a big catch. That's going to be another first down for Salina. Yeah, and if you're the Rams, you've got to be real fortunate right there because if he catches that football, it's a touchdown. Yeah, if he there doesn't have to reach up. within 10 yards of him. Nope, he's going to be off to the races for sure. Salina, though, getting the yards when they need them. They are over midfield now, keeping this drive alive. Gavis sends Jones in motion. Jones. Going to drop back, throws it back. Here's Gavis looking for a block. Looks to cut it back inside at the 20. Cross the 20-yard line, continues to get a push. And we have a late flag coming in when that Just pile was pushing. Wonder if maybe there wasn't a face mask. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. Salina right there went to the old Philadelphia Eagle tush push right there to get him an extra, what, five or ten yards. We'll see as it looks like Salina may be starting to walk backwards. I don't know if maybe we'll have a block in the back potentially down there or what the call will be, but Salina looks like they know this one's going to be on them. Boy, what an athletic play right there by that young man. Davis didn't have a lot of space as he was able to. Uh, it's a five-yarder, isn't it? Is yeah, five-yard block in the back. Or no, assisting the runner. So as you called it, it's that brotherly shove that the Eagles have made so famous. But here in high school level, it's illegal. Not allowed to do it. So even though his teammates were just trying to help, the penalty gets called. It's only a five-yarder, though. So Linus still gets the first down. Now have first and 10 from the 24-yard line. How big is this series if you're a Bulldog? Well, I think you can tell that even the coaching staff in that sideline know this is a big drive as we've seen a couple of gadget plays and a couple of misdirections trying to get this defense to loosen up a little bit as they keen in on the run. Berkey looks to bounce off the right. Another short gain as the Rams defense continues to fly to the football. Yeah, Ostendorf right there with another big stop. Their leading tackler coming in. 59 solos, 53 assists for 112 stops. You know, one thing they have not been able to do is they've not been able to get into the backfield. Coming in, they've had 23 sacks and 46 tackle for losses. If my memory serves me correctly, partner, they probably had a couple three tackles for losses, but I don't think there's been any sacks. Second and 10, no gain on the first down play. Davis, going to roll to his left, looking to throw. There's this one out. Nice connection as he ends up in the hands of Xander Jones. They're going to say caught, and he is going to be out right around the 15-yard line. 
And I believe this is going to be third and short for the Bulldogs. Damn big catch right there. You got to believe this is a two down territory if you're a Bulldog. Aiden Brown pushed him out. Not until he got to the 15 yard line. Wouldn't be surprised if this one, they called Gavis' his number himself, just trying to get up, get the chains moving. Yeah, you got to believe you're going to go behind your big offensive line that's got you here tonight. Gavis waits for the snap. Going to take it. Does keep it himself. Looks for that jump pass again. Makes one man miss. And he gets tackled by a couple out of bounds before he goes down. Boy, you that's, see this, that that's was a lucky awful one close. right there. That was a close call for a late hit out of bounds by Mr. I, Ostendorf. I do think, though, that was kind of on the edge of that continuation sure. as they both were going, kind of lost their footing. Don't think there's anything uh, nefarious about that. But it was awfully close. But either way, going to be a first down for the Bulldogs. Another great play that time by Gavis as he was able to shed a tackle in the backfield to pick up that first down. I'll tell you, Mr. Oshendor play was a, plays with a high motor, doesn't he? He goes really well side to side and vertical. What a complete football player. Morris into the game, takes the snap, hands this one off to Berkey. Berkey. Trying to shed a tackle, but a tremendous play in the backfield as he is going to be dropped for a loss. Got the cleats in the ground, didn't he? I mean, it, it, it's rare that at this level you, you're able to see a defender just completely stop the momentum of another player and pick them up and move them backwards. But that is oh, exactly what he did. It was like a thud. I mean, it was right there in the hole. Great fundamental tackle by that young man. Probably going to have double digits and tackles tonight. Had a big night for the Rams. Morris going to go to the air. Bobby Morris looking for somewhere to go with it. Drops it short. Nice connection working up the sideline as a Caden Wirtz. Was taken out of bounds, just shy of the five-yard line. It's going to bring up third and about seven. Inniger, Ostendorf on the stop. Taken out of bounds by Nate Ostendorf. So they moved it. They moved it down to the seven-yard line. So it's going to be third and four. Salina will be able to pick up a first down. They don't have to put it in the end zone. And if they don't pick this up, partner, it's going to be interesting to see if they choose to take the field goal or try to go yeah, for it. It's going to be interesting. It might be a little bit too far right now to go for it on fourth down. But let's see what Salina has drawn up here. Bad snap, but a whistle prior to may have bailed the Bulldogs out and a timely timeout by the Salina Bulldogs sideline just saved that third down play. Salina takes their first time out of the half. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's premier sponsor for Salina Bulldogs is Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. A big third down here for the Bulldogs. Davis going to roll to his right, looks for an avenue, tries to cut it back up, and he is dropped. He may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. If not, it was going to be a short loss. Well, and, and it looks the like the field thing. goal unit's coming out on Where the field. Where did he put the football, though? It's in the middle of the field. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It's not going to be an angle on the on the field goal attempt. He put it in the middle of the field. I think he was just trying to get as much as he could. But a heck of a play defensively by Ed Enninger. To attempt the field goal for the Bulldogs. Now the field goal attempt by the Bulldogs. He drilled it. And a nice, powerful good. kick is good. So Salina good. adds three points to their total. They're on top, 24-19. Went in 24 left to go here in the third. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's Instant Replay sponsor, Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alt. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. 
So Salina puts together a big drive. They got a lot of that yardage through the air, which is not something that we had seen from them. As you see, Aiden Brown calls off trying to get that hand. We talked about the success that he has had as a returner. You know that Batten wanted to see if they couldn't get him an opportunity with the football in his hands on this kickoff, but Salina had a nice job in coverage, limited him to just a few yards on the return. Yeah. That, that's where the Rams are going to come out for their next drive. Yeah, and that comes down to, you know what, you're going to play percentages here, and they're keeping it away from the dynamic duo on their kickoff returns and basically just making a pooch pop kick right there and Wesley Graber on the stop. You know, Salina coming away with points is huge, partner, even though it was three. You know, survived the 120 right here. Yordy just trucking through the defense, picks up another first down. You know, and we really sung the praises of the Salina offense in that first half. We didn't spend a whole lot of time talking about the success that the Rams had. They came out on that opening drive, took it right down the field and scored. Just they like did, the first possession of the game, partner. They did have a turnover on the next one. And then they scored on their third. The fourth, they just ran out as they were trying to force it downfield. So they had a lot of success as well outside of that turnover as Grayson gets upended here after about a two, three yard gain. And so this is a line of defense. has got to find a way to get these guys to slow down, maybe force another turnover potentially, get them in long yarded situations, something. Because right now, the Rams have been able to do whatever they wanted on offense as well. Yeah, you know, and, and you haven't seen the Rams throw the ball vertically with the exception in the first half, and that was into a stiff breeze. But, uh, you know, you want to survive, I was going to say, but I bit my tongue on that long run there because they want to survive here and get to flip the field. But you like you said, they've got to get stops defensively and put them in long, third and long situations here as we get ready to enter the fourth quarter. Grayson, the ball carrier that time, picks up about five on the second down carry. Going to bring up third and about three left to go here. As Grayson's going to have to check out. Yordy's going to come back in, and that is going to bring the third quarter to a close. A touchdown by the Rams, a field goal by Salina has our score at 24-19, heading into the fourth quarter of play. We're going to step aside and be back on WOSF. Welcome back. Today's premier sponsor for the Salina Bulldogs is the Wal is Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Tonight's instant replay sponsor, Structure Outdoor Ohio by all. Let's let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. Fourth quarter just about underway here at Trotwood Madison High School for the regional final. And these teams are playing for a chance to be part of the Final four in Division Three as Yordy goes right through the middle and moves the chains as he is having a big second half. Yeah, that was a big cutback right there. Nice cutback, nice explosion to get that first down. But not until he was banged down to the ground by number one, Caleb Gavis. Winner of this game, partner, is going to play the winner of Bell Fountain and Columbus Waterson. Last report we had, it was tied at 13-13. Bell Fountain, of course, has the Ohio State commit. Tavion St. Clair, Bishop Watterson, a powerhouse every year coming out of the Columbus area. So whoever plays them is going to have a handful as they go to the air. What great defense. A beautiful job that time. As that, that was Caleb Gabus, wasn't yeah, it? Yes, it was. Caleb Gabus does a tremendous job. There was not too much contact, read the receiver's eyes, was able to get his hand up, knock that one away. And that was a touchdown saving defensive play by Gavis. Yeah, he got his hand up there. You know, thankfully he had his head turned a little bit towards the football. But yeah, nice thrown ball right there, but just a better play defensively. Here's Jordy, works off to the right side, tries to cut it back up. Salina does a great job. Uh, trailing the football that time, limiting Yordi to just a one-yard gain. It's going to be a third and nine for the Rams. Yeah, Braylon Gavis coming up real aggressively right there. Kept him from bouncing it outside, got him by the ankles and dropped him for basically a one-yard gain. This is the third and nine, partner, you were talking about. Now they've got to make some decisions if you're the Rams throwing it into a stiff freeze. 
We've seen Salina play cushion and give a lot of space to these Rams receivers. We'll see if they try to tighten that up here on this third and nine. Ritzy throws across the middle, wide open, connects as this one is going to go all the way down to the 20-yard line as Austin Buckle makes a great catch in space and picks up another big first down for the Rams. Yeah, I don't know who made the block on Merlin. You know, Merlin was setting himself up to go right at the quarterback and somebody threw a, a block right there, just giving the quarterback enough time to re release that football. Nice pitch and catch by the Rams. Well, Ritzy once again keeps the play alive by his feet. This is going to be a pitch out to Yordy. Yordy moves it up inside the 10-yard line. It's going to be another first down for the Rams. And they're going to be first and goal from the 8-yard line. Caleb gave his right there, saving the touchdown right there. Got him by the ankles. Great vision by that young man. The Salina defense needs to come up with some big stops here. Yordy looking for some space. Goes right into a couple of Bulldog defenders. Is taken down inside the five-yard line. Up to the four-yard line. Second and goal. Clock continues to run. 9.40 left to go in the game. Second and goal from the four for the Rams. They trail 24-19 but will go on top with a touchdown. Yordi goes right up the middle. Salina right there to push him back. A big stop right there, trying to see who's coming out in the white jersey from under the pile. Appears to be Mr. Lehman, number six. Nice job by that young man the last couple plays. This is where the linebackers are going to play big for Salina. A huge third down for the Rams on the four-yard line. Going to hand this one off to Grayson. Going to cut up the middle, and he is going to be in for a Burke Petroleum touchdown as the Rams have their first lead since early in the first quarter. Yeah, the cutback right there is what got him to the end zone. I think one of the concerns was I know Salina was asking for a hold. But you know what? It's been a very clean play game to this point. And they just opened up enough seam right there for him to, so to speak, slither his way to the end zone. But what a great cutback and great vision by that young man to find the end zone. So now with the one point lead, Batten is going to try to go for two to make this a three point difference. Ritz, he looks to the sidelines, getting the play coming in. Gets everyone set. Ritzke takes a snap, going to hand this one off. Yordy's going to walk into the end zone, but we have a flag yeah, that comes there's out. There's a flag right and there. That Let's might see be what that, it is. That might be that holding that Salina was asking for on the touchdown, and it is holding against the Rams. It'd be interesting to see where it comes from. Offense, number 43. Ten yards, three, use a try. So now being pushed back, I'd imagine we would see Baden want to go ahead and kick it. But I'm not sure if they, they may not have a kicker that they feel can make it from this distance. Because it looks like they still have the offense out there and they're going to try this two point conversion again. But this time it's going to be from the 13 yard line. Yeah, you don't want to get too comfortable defensively and let him get his feet set back there. Ritzy, the seized part, he's looking for somewhere to go with it. Going to throw this one out, and that one's going to be a no good out of the reach of Buckle as he can't convert the two-point, and it is going to stay a one-point game with the Rams on top, 25-24. Nate Garlock alongside Darren Gilbert here in Trotwood, Madison. And, you know, Gil, the last time that we saw Salina down, they got the ball, and in about five or six plays, marched down the field, a big chunk yardage. We saw Braylon Davis able to put one in on a long run. But the offense hasn't looked quite as smooth here in the second half. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to revert back to this again. They flipped ends, partner, and they got the wind of their back. Okay? So it's going to be interesting to see if the Rams decide to put eight in the box and put Slime in a position to throw the football. And we know they're capable of doing that. 
you know, he's been very consistent tonight. Has that been great long deep balls? No, but it's been the, the little dink passes, eight and 10 yards that turned into 15 and 17 yard gains after the catch. So it's gonna be interesting. We're, we're in for a heck of a barn burner this last eight minutes and 49 seconds. Tonight's touchdowns are brought to you by Burke Petroleum. Burke Petroleum is now offering propane for residential, farm, commercial, and industrial users. Burke Petroleum, dependable, available. Contact them at 800-776-3097. This one's gonna be returnable for Salina. As bounces off the turf. Burke is gonna move up. They're gonna get taken down about the 22 yard line. And Salina will come out and see if they can have some success here. Move the football down and they gotta get some points on the board. Albrink on the stop for the Rams. Yeah, they don't have to get it all at once, partner. You want to use some of the clock, get positive gains. This is not the time to panic. 8.43 left to go in this one. Davis looks to run, cuts it back up. One man to beat and fortunate for Madden that they were able to track down Braylon Gavis as if he could have shed one more block. He was going to go all the way. He was off to the races, wasn't he? Big pickup on first down. Get the momentum back on the Bulldog side. And we'll have, your save to touchdown. And they'll have first and 10 from their own 43-yard line. 8.20 and counting left to go in this one. Davis sends Jones in motion, takes a snap. Gonna hand this one off to Jones. Jones cuts through, has a lane, and he's gonna get it out beyond the sticks. Pick up another first down for the Bulldogs, waiting for the official signal. Yeah, he didn't mess around with that one, trying to juke for extra yards. He put his shoulder down and saw where that 10-yard marker was to get that first down. He did exactly that. Now, and Salina is getting back to what was working so well in the first half. They're stretching this Baden defense out, using those sweeps, getting out to the edges, not trying to just to run into the heart of that defense. They have eight in the box, so they got to find a way to create space. See, Davis trying to follow his lead blocker, works through some traffic before he's taken down after a pickup of about five on first down. Five positive yards right there. Because, you know, Rams did a good job, job stretching it out. He just did a better job finding his way, weaving through there to get as much as he could. So it only ends up being about a three yard carry in the stat book, but I'd say it's more like a long six yards to go from where they have it marked here on second down. Yeah, we initially thought five, didn't we? Davis. Sends the man in motion, takes a snap, hand. He's gonna roll, gonna go to the air. Everybody clears out, he has space. Makes a man miss, cuts back up to the middle of the field, takes a big hit, but he picks up that first down. And I believe the Baden defender might have gotten the worst of that one. As he is still down, the officials are gonna yeah. call a timeout and the, they're going to have the trainer come out and check on him. We're gonna step aside and we'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back to Trotwood Madison High School. As the Madden player was able to walk off the field under his own power, which is a great sign. Hopefully he'll be okay. We are back underway. Salina, they've been moving the ball effectively here on this drive as they have it down on their own 28 yard line. Gonna hand this one off to Berkey. He tries to cut off. But Madden does a nice job of swarming him, stopping him short after maybe only one yard or less. Ostendorf, Edinger in on the stop. Edinger in on the stop for the Rams. Going to be second and 10 for the Bulldogs from the 28 yard line. 6.08 left to go here in the game. There's no game on the play, second and 10. Salina trailing by one, 25 24. A spot in the final four awaits the winner of tonight. Davis being patient, following some blockers. Gets it up the middle, has a nice gain of about four. 
going to bring up third and six for the Bulldogs. Ostendorf on the stop, along with Carson Cheek coming up from the safety spot. A big third down here. You know, partner, I know we know that Salina has a kicker with a good leg. Do you happen to know his range? You got to believe he, he's capable of kicking with this breeze tonight. You got to believe he can go from 40 or 45 yards. So we are on the doorsteps of what could potentially be a makeable field goal. But we'll have to see what Salina does here on the third down. They're going to go to the air. Gavis looking to air it out. Has to find somebody. Jumps, tries to lead the receiver but just out of the reach of Jones as he couldn't bring that one in. And now it's decision time for the Bulldogs as it looks like the field goal unit maybe is coming out. I believe so, partner. I think they're going to give him a shot with the wind behind him. So they'll be on the 24-yard line, back about five yards, another 10. You're looking right around that 40-yard field goal here. 41, sound about right. Kicking into the wind. Going to be on the right hash. And this is to put Salina on top with 5.03 left to go. Burbers kick, plenty of leg. It is up. And My it is goodness. good. That one a would have been good 40, from 50. A 41-yard field goal by Zach Ruber puts Salina on top, 25-25 with 4.58 left to go. We'll step aside and be back on WOSA. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, Delpas, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. So a long field goal for Salina puts them back on top two, 27-25. As I'll tell you what, partner, as this one's going to sail out of the back of the end zone, how big are those... And that initial missed extra point oh, on the huge, very first touchdown. Huge. That's led to several two-point conversion tries that sure Baden has not been able to convert. They have all touchdowns tonight, but find themselves down 27-25. If they had converted those extra points, they're still on top here, 28-27. Yeah, that was the change of the complexion of the game, the extra point to start the game, and then it changes the philosophy after you score on whether you kick for an extra point or go for the two. A lot of time left in this football game, especially with the arm and the running back. Salina's got to put him in third down in long situations if possible. Going to go to the air, put the ball in the hands of Brown. Aiden Brown fighting through, ends up getting taken down after a gain of about seven. It'll be second and three. And you got to imagine if you're batting, you're going to be completely fine with continuing to let this clock run. We know that they're able to run the sure. ball effectively. And they can throw it. And, get, and they want to get the ball to their speedsters on the perimeter. And Grayson and Yordi. This is going to be Grayson this time as he works up. He's going to be stout for no game. It'll be third and short coming up for the Rams. Big stop right there by Chilcote. It looks to be number 58 on the stop. Slide of Faithful coming to their feet. Third and three, Zach Yordy back into the game. He has been able to run at will on this Bulldog defense. Let's see if they have an answer here on third down. He's going to bounce it outside, and he is well, met by a host be, of Bulldogs, he's and he's going to be short. short. You betcha. He's going to bring up a fourth down. You know that Baden is going to go for it here. Mr. Merlin coming up from the nose tackle spot. Plugging that gap right there. How big is this play for the Rams? How big a play is this for the Bulldogs? The Rams still with all three of their timeouts. You got to think that they are going to try to pick this one up right here. Oh, boy. And he is going to be stopped. It. It's going to depend on He's the mark. Short. As Salina grabbed and pulled him back, they're going to say no. Turnover on downs for the Bulldogs. Wow, did the front four come up big along with the linebackers? We had talked about the offense of Baden and how they had just ran all over this Salina defense. But when it mattered most, the Bulldogs come up with a huge stop on fourth down. 
Not only that, they get the ball in excellent field position as they are almost automatically in scoring range with the field goal that we just saw on their last possession. Well, guess what? You got 322 to go. Secure the football, you know what I'm saying, number one, and run a high percentage play. Baden does still have all three of their timeouts, so they can stop the clock. We'll see how they want to play it. Nice decision by Gabe at that time as he you cut betcha. it back in to keep it in play. You betcha. And Batten is going to spend their first time out, it looks like. What a head he played by that young man. He could have bounced it outside. And he decided to get as much as he could and just sit down with it. So time out by the Rams. We're going to keep it right here. Regional final one step away from the final four. Next Friday night, the state semifinal. The locations have been announced, but I'm not positive we're division. No, no, we do know. It'll be Xenia. Xenia is, according to what we, we saw posted, or I saw posted today, last indication it was 13 to 13 between Bell Fountain and Bishop Waterson. So the winner of tonight will move on down to Xenia to play the winner of that game. Still a lot of game left to play here. Nate Garlock alongside of Darren Gilbert. And Gil, if you're Salina right now, you know that Batten is going to want to take their timeouts. They're going to want to stop this clock. They're going to want to get it back. You have an opportunity. You can still kick it. That will still only put you up five. Is, are you looking at four down territory, I think, you think? No, I think you're going to put yourself in a position where, you know what, just play fundamentally sound football, take some of the clock, and make them use your timeouts and keep the ball in play. Yeah, Davis. I mean, if it comes to a field goal after he just kicked almost a 50-yarder, well, that's almost mid loses that's, his and that's footing, okay. able to stay on his feet, gets back to the middle of the field, but not able to pick up much of anything on that run. It's going to be third and long for Salina as Baden will take time their out. second timeout. But if Baden takes this timeout, we're going to run one more play. They're going to take the next one. Salina does not pick up a first down here. They're facing a fourth down from this part of the field. Well, and it's if also you kick the field goal, if we kick the field goal, you're up five with right. with right around just under three left to go. Do you go for it and leave the points on the field knowing that it's still going to take them a touchdown? Not really sure what Baden's kicking game See, looks like, or do you take the points and at least make them have to get in the end zone? My opinion, I don't think Baden takes the timeout right here. Okay. I think, you know, and they put, they put the hands in Salina and see what Salina's going to do with it because they can afford, in my personal opinion, to take that last timeout. You yeah. know, Salina and then you've got to go the full length of the field into the breeze, you know, and well, with Salina no timeouts. Can, and Salina can make all this arguments completely for nothing if they can pick up the first down right here. And I Gabe was wrong. is going to drop back. He's going to go to the air. They risk the throw. That one's going to be incomplete. The clock will stop here on fourth down with 3.02. So Salina took a risk to try to see if they couldn't pick up the first down through the air. They had a receiver. But oh, he's going to give it a shot, isn't he? Yep, Gavis not able to connect. So they are going to go for the field goal here. That will force Baden to have to put it in the end zone if he's able to connect. This one's going to be longer than the last one. He and gets the same trajectory and the same length on it here, make it. 45-yard field goal on its way. It's up. And it is good. Oh, he drilled that one too, didn't he, partner? A phenomenal kick that time by Zach Gruber as he is able to put a 45-yard field goal in and extend the lead to 30-25. to Salina on top. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Today's premier sponsor for the Salina Bulldogs is Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Salina on top, 30 to 25 here at Trotwood Madison High School in this regional final matchup between the Baton Rams and the Salina Bulldogs. 2.57 left to go in this one. Salina inching closer to that state semifinal berth. We saw the defense come up huge on the last possession by the Rams. 
How and big is that right there? Kicking the ball through the end zone, not letting them get into their ball player's hands. The athletes is capable of breaking long runs. 2.57 left to go. They have to get a touchdown. A little deja vu, though, as Abaddon found themselves down to Walpark last week. Had to get down the field, end up putting it in with two seconds left to go. So you know that there's some confidence on that Rams sideline, oh, and they are not panicking at all. Yep, they were in this position last week and took the thing down and scored after being down 10 to nothing. So yeah, they've been in this position before, just last week. Let's see what Salina does defensively. Ritz is going to drop back, going to throw it back, trying to set up the oh screen. Oh my and goodness! Almost picked off. Great heads up play that time as that one's going to fall incomplete, bring up second and 10. Was that Joe Coach that got his big paw up there and swatted it down? It appeared to be number 58 from this side. What a heady play, because I'll tell you, if he catches that, he's got some yardage in front of him. Ritzy takes the snap, going to go to the air one more time. Buckle on the near sideline. He's going to get drug out of bounds, and there's the flag. An extra 15 yards as Xander Jones that time. One too many spins as he sent him flying out right in front of the official. A big mental mistake by Xander Jones. Yeah, that's one of those right there. You know he's going to get as much as he can and step out of bounds. You just got to let him go and let him run out of bounds. That is something that you just can't have happen here in this moment. As you see Xander Jones, he's had a great game for Salina getting and talking to on the sideline by the coaching staff. They're going to need him to get back into this one. So, but now Maiden with 2.49 left to go. And he got the ball at the 44-yard line. Ritz, he's going to drop back, going to look to air it out one more time, gets out of trouble. Going to throw it deep one more time, and this one almost knocked away Whoa. again. A great heads-up play by Corbin Lehman. Did Able he get to disrupt his hands on it? I could not see. Did he get a hand on it? Or it did he looked just get like it, but if nothing else, you know he at least disrupted the vision of that receiver if he didn't tip it. It was a great heads-up play to lay out. It's going to bring up second and ten for the Rams. Yeah, Salina's got to form some type of pressure on the quarterback. He's too good when he stands back there and get his feet set. Ritz, he drops back again. He's going to let this one go. This one is caught. And going to be out of bounds, but not before he picks up another first down for the Rams. And that is number 21, Cheek. Carson Cheek, with that catch and run. So the Rams doing a nice job of conserving, just conserving time on the clock. They're getting out of bounds, not having to use their last timeout yet. Ritzy going to throw it one more time. Tried to get it out to Aiden Brown. Not able to connect. That one, it was a forward pass. So even though you see Xander Jones back into the game, trying to scoop that one up and run, the officials blew it dead. Yeah, that was a great piece of coaching. You know, they got the kid over, they talked to him, got him back in the football game. Well, partner, we just found out the winner of this game will move on and play at Xenia. It's going to be Bishop Watterson, a 19 to 13 winner over the Bell Fountain Chieftains. Ritzy going long, and this oh, one is picked boy. off as he underthrew Buckle, and who else but Braylon Davis takes it over, and he's going to cut it up. He's looking to score. He's he going to that far sideline. He's only got to be one more guy. He's going to take it all the way in for, for a, a touchdown. touchdown, and that may be a game-sealing touchdown for the Salina Bulldogs. Holy smokes, what a ball game that young man has had tonight on both sides of the football. They went with a little hitch and go right there, stop and go action. And he just played center field, made a great read on the football. Not only did he make a great read on the football for the interception, but he weaved his way all the way to the end zone for a touchdown. 
Alex Ritzy has had a tremendous game. He has kept so many plays alive with his feet. He's made some great throws. He's made some great reads. He has played a fantastic game, but an underthrown ball. You've mentioned it multiple times, how big the field position and the way that they were going were gonna, was going to play into this one. Ritzy is throwing into the wind. That one gets knocked down. Braylon Gabis was right there to pick that one up. And then he had all sorts of space in front of him. He did a great job of reading the field, weaving in and out of trouble, and takes it in for the touchdown. Well, this ball club that they're playing, Hamilton Baton is a good football team, and their record speaks for themselves over the past few years. And to come in here right now and, and, and put up an 11-point uh, lead here with 2.13 to go, not a lot of folks in this stands were giving Salina Bulldogs you know, the opportunity to pull this one off. That means now, partner, they beat the two seed, the three seed, and with 2.13 to go, we're looking at a possible upset of the one seed. Salina came into the playoffs sitting as the sixth seed. Co-champs in the Western Buckeye League. And we know what a grind week in and week out that WBL can be. Salina. And the opportunity here to make this a 12-point game. As you see Batten trying to time up the snap on that time. They're going to get a little bit too much of a head start. So the penalty flags come in. We're going to have a re-kick. Yeah, I don't know that you can say enough good things about Braylon Davis tonight and what he has done for Salina. Running from the quarterback position what he has done with his arm, what he's done with his leg, what he's done defensively. We've seen him all over the field. And then to come up with that huge, potentially game ceiling interception, he has just had an absolutely fantastic game. And even with a better time snap jump that time, Salina still able to get that extra point it up and good to make this one 37-25. And partner, you know what? We need to give a shout out to the coaching staff from Salina. Head coach Brennan Bader, assistant coaches Travis Chilco, Craig Carey, Corey Howell, Jack Hemmelgarn, Adam Neal, Roy Pfeiffer, Aaron Schreffler. Well, boy, that's a name from the past. Great football player for Salina. Kyle Fink, Jason Lipp. You know, the game plan that they drew up to come down here and play tonight, you know, after taking their lump against for sales the first game of the year, to win eight in a row, to go into Wapak, and, you know, falling the way they did and to regroup and get healed up and then go on a run right now with 2.13 to go to play for an opportunity in the Final Four is unbelievable. An absolutely tremendous season that, at least as of right now, appears that it is going to continue for at least one more week. This one is going to be fielded by Brown, so we're going to get a chance to see how good he is at this kick return. As he has some space. He's going to cut it back up. And this is why, as he gets this out to about the 50-yard line, we have seen Salina do absolutely everything they can to keep the ball out of his hands all night long. Now you want to know why the ball wanted to go into the end zone? Because when those two dynamic guys get it, they can be game changers. Sideline warning on Baden. So Hamilton Baden gets a sideline warning. 37-25, Salina on top, 204 left to go in this one. Regional finals from Trotwood Madison High School. Ritzy coming off the interception. You got to know that Baden knows that they have to score quickly. Going to swing this one out to Cheeks. Cheeks tries to cut it back inside. He's going to be tripped up right around the 45 yard line. Braylon Gabe is on the stop. Second down. Baden going to have to move with some tempo here. Not going to have as much time to look for the plays to get called in. Yeah, they got to go quick, don't they? Ritzy going to throw this one out to Cheeks on the other side. He's going to get out of bounds and stop the clock after a nice pickup. Fresh set of downs for the Rams as this one is going to be marked down right around the 32, 33 yard line. And it'll be the 32.
First and 10, 137 left to go. Ritzy not ready to call it night yet. Going to air this one out across the middle of the field. Gets it in the hands of Brown. Brown taken down at the 15-yard line. The Rams still have one timeout. But you know that they'd like to hold on to that one if they can. Don't want to have to burn that one yet, knowing that they're going to need another possession. Well, he didn't mess around on that one. He definitely just, he let that one rip. This is the Cheeks one more time. Cheeks runs the sidelines, gets out of bounds, stops the clock with 1.16 left to go. So bad not calling it a night quite yet. They are quickly. My goodness, are they getting that thing up and down the field quick and quick like? Yeah, they are already down to the 12-yard line. If they're able to punch this in, you fully suspect the onside kick to come. Oh, yes. That's, yeah, oh, yeah. That's a given. So you know if they and if they're able to get that one, they'd love to still have a timeout in their pocket. Ritzy gonna have to roll. Throws this one to the end zone. Great defensive play that time. That is gonna be Caden Wurntz was able to reach around and knock that one down. Boy, that was a heck of a play. Got that inside hand and just deflected it. Because he was open initially, but boy, he closed on the football in his his man real quick and made a heck of a defensive play there with his hand. Gonna have an injury timeout here as number six, Quinn Brennan is shaking up. Injury. Normally we'd step aside on the injuries, but I think that Brennan just went down because his teammates were telling him to due to the fact that he had a long way to go. The trainer already out and he's gonna be walking off. So we'll keep it right here. 108 left to go. You know that Madden's gonna be looking towards the end zone. They're able to put this one in. Got the onside kick coming. Seen a couple of onside kicks this year work um, at the high school level, which is a very rare thing. Saw it in the Shawnee Ottawa Glandorf game earlier this year. Ottawa Glandorf able to get an onside kick. They would go on to win that game thanks to that recovery. I'm sure Salina and the coaching staff is talking about that over there on the sidelines and anybody that's you know involved in that, they're gonna have an all hands team in there if you know, Baden can find the end zone right here. Third and what, long seven. Salina defense would just like that to not even be a point. See if they can get a turnover. As that one just gets thrown out of bounds by Ritzy as it was great coverage downfield by the Bulldogs. So it's going to be fourth and seven as Salina doesn't even, they wouldn't don't even want to have to worry about that onside kick. They can get a stop right here, get a turnover on downs, and they will well, be able to end this one. That, that's the key word, on downs or not in the end zone, okay? Because they can still get a first down, what, at the five-yard line? Salina so tightening the coverage on the receivers. Ritzy going to roll out to his left. Looks to throw, no one there. Oh, going to have to get rid of it, and he can't. He is taken down for a loss. And that is going to be a turnover on downs by Salina. They're second here of this quarter. And that is going to do it as the Bulldogs are going to be able to run out the clock. And they will move on to the state semifinals. Yeah, what a big play right there. And I do not have a, a name to go with. That appeared to be number 57. That's set by number 57. Who's not listed? <laughs> We're looking, so is the, the, the PA, PA announcer. announcer. <laughs> also announces he can't find 57. So at least we know it's not just us up here in the booth. You know? well, Mr. 57 made a heck of a play right there. So now Salina is going to get in victory formation. Braden Gabus, who's had a tremendous game, goes under center, takes one knee. Please ask that you do not come on the field. One more knee is all it's going to take, and Salina is going to move Second on. Down. They will play next Friday night in Xenia against the Bishop Watterson. All we can do is both here and smile. I mean, a six seed taking down the two, the three, and now the one. When you get into with this, especially with this expanded playoffs, you, you know, you know, even if you're in in the mid time or in the, that mid range at six, seven, eight. You may get a, you may get one of those kind of mid-level games to start with, but you know that you're going to have to compete against the best oh, and beat the did. best if you want a long run. And Salina has done just that, as you mentioned, knocking off the three seed, the two seed, and now the one seed as they move on to the final four in the state semifinals.
Yeah, congratulations to the Salina Bulldogs, their fans, the community, the students, the players, the coaches. It's been fun following you. Hopefully, I don't know what, you know, the intentions are, but if we get an opportunity to cover you, cover you I'm sure we'll be there if, if we get that opportunity. And again, to win a regional championship in Division Three, you move on and play Bishop Waterson, as you said. Man, a tremendous game tonight. We'd be remiss we didn't talk about that offense from Salina and what they were able to do against a bat in defense that had been very stingy for pretty much most of this season. Really led in, in all fronts by uh, Braden, uh, Braylon Gabus all night long, what he was able to do with his legs, with his arms. We, we know what he did here in this fourth quarter with the, on the defensive side of things. That young man was everywhere and did everything that this team needed. But coming in, one of the big storylines was going to be up front on that O-line and on that D-line, whether or not they were going to be, be able to match up with the size that Batten was going to be able to throw to Adam. And they did a phenomenal did. job all night long, creating holes, letting Gavis be able to be patient and pick his spots. The kickout blocks that they had, the pulling that they had by their guards, they had a tremendous game plan. They were up for the task tonight, and they came away with a huge victory. Well, and you, you got to think about this, too. When's the last time Hamilton Baden's give up 37 points? You know, Salina put 37 points on. And I, I, I'm like you, you know, the defense of Salina bent, but they didn't break tonight. But they, I mean, the offensive line, and a lot of those kids are going both ways. They just did a phenomenal job. It was a total team win. And again, congratulations to them. Congratulations to Hamilton Baden. You know, you have represented your league and your community very well. And to get back here, uh, you know, they have high expectations, and I'm sure they're disappointed. But uh, you know what? Tomorrow's another day, and and uh, you know those kids are, have nothing to be ashamed of. So that is just going to wrap it up. About wrap it up for us here at Troutwood Madison High School. I'd like to thank our crew tonight, Megan and Seth, running the cameras up here, fighting the elements with us. We appreciate everything you guys do. We get the fun job. You guys have to work all the technical stuff. We appreciate all that you guys do for us, everybody back at the studio as well. Congratulations one final time to the Salina Bulldogs as they are regional champs. They move on to the state semifinals as they knock off the number one seed, Hamilton Baden Rams, 37-25. For Darren Gilbert, I'm Nate Garlock. Thanks for tuning in, and have a great night, everybody.